Yo, what's up? We are now at the Nebene Supercharger and behind me here I have Milan Falcon. Yes, and this is going to be a little bit weird video, a uh, weird start because uh, we've been charging up now to 99% and I'm going to do a range test but I will do the 120 kilometers per hour test first. So see Mr. Green Sticker is on. Uh, what you need to know is that I'm in the process of calibrating the battery right now. Um, it seems like the previous owners haven't charged the car to 100% uh, recently or maybe, yeah, they might, maybe they've been only staying around to 90% or whatever. So I actually stay, when <laughs> I spend several hours, I spend three, four hours a day charging it slowly and then whatever, uh, but we can still do the, the 120 kilometers per hour test because I want to see how efficient um, Milena Falcon is and it's fairly nice weather today 7 degrees Celsius so and it's close enough we are missing out what seems like 0.5 kilowatt hour so it's not going to make that big of a difference for this test so um, yeah and also the, the settings I will be using range mode 21 degrees Celsius and that's it so we're going to drive a little bit up and down here and then we'll see how far it can go so this car is old yeah for for you guys who don't know uh, if you look here at uh, at uh, here here okay so the 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 odometer is at 350k almost but the battery was replaced at 86k six years ago no it yeah six years ago in 2014 so it means that this battery has done um, uh, 262,000 kilometers and the drivetrain has been replaced at least once or twice i don't remember but the, at least the motor sounds nice and, and nice and tight so right let's do the final preparation and then off we go all right we are on the move oh mjösen is quite calm today wow there's almost no wind at mjösen all right and i have to cruise at 122 kilometers per hour on the on the speedo here and you see for you guys who are not familiar this is um this is a classic speedometer because there is no adaptive cruise control, there is no autopilot, so this is what you see <laughs> in the Insima cluster on this car. Yeah, so so far so good. We will be able to drive all the way to, uh, what's it called again? Um, Rutshögda. That's uh, supposedly a round trip is 167 kilometers. There's a little bit of traffic now. Hopefully we don't get stuck too long behind these guys because I'm, I'm basically drafting behind them now. Yeah, there we go, that's slightly better. Oh yeah, but nice weather and once again 2 degrees Celsius, you can see it on the bottom there, 2 degrees Celsius, yeah. So very good driving condition but a little bit cold outside, that's it. Wow, really nice weather today, oof, I haven't seen such nice weather around Oslo for a long time. But so far uh, the estimation shows me that uh, it looks like we have about um, about 64 to 65 kilowatt hour based on how much the energy we spend now um, okay so far so good and also you see right now scan my tesla here shows me that i have 345 kilowatt power limit so that's good it means that if i would hammer it now i'm not going to do it we, we should should still be getting a pretty good acceleration so i'm also going to test the acceleration on the millennium falcon but that will be done in another day. I will do the 10 to 90 percent, uh, the, the 90 to 10 percent acceleration test. But I have to wait for well, uh, I have to wait for uh, good enough driving conditions. It needs to be dry, and I, I'm not sure if these tires, it's a, the Frigus EV winter tires, if they are, <laughs> they have good enough grip for for the acceleration or not. So we will see. Right, we are now back at Nebenes and according to Google it's supposed to be 167 kilometers to yeah, a little bit past the bridge here maybe to the, the two signs 167 all right we have 160 uh, 170 so that means around two percent error over reporting yes over reporting distance by two percent we are getting close to the end of the test right now and we have uh, 13 percent now outside one degree Celsius and I noticed something, if you look at Sky, my Tesla here, you see that the battery is then kept at 42.5 degrees. It's been staying at around 40 degrees for the whole high-speed test. So 
this is a little bit uh, different from uh, MC Hammer, my Model 3, which keeps the battery at only around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, even during high speed runs like this, well, high-ish speeds. You see the power limit is now down to 287 uh, kilowatt, but that's pretty safe, man. Yes, we still don't have any dotted line in the display here. So I feel confident we can drive it low to like 5%, maybe even 2, 3%. We will see. We are back now uh, at Nebenest and I just plugged in. We had 3%, we had 1%, 1.5% and in the beginning we got 120 kilowatt. Now we're down to 116 kilowatt already. <laughs> but it seems like I, I did get over 120 kilowatt briefly, but now it drops and it, it will actually drop quite fast. So <sighs> unfortunately, uh, with the old packs, if you want to go get good speed, you have to arrive with like like 2% or whatever. But as long as you see here, we have 42 degrees in the pack, nice and hot. And also the power limit was over 200 kilowatt when we arrived so uh, okay maybe in terms of degradation it's not the best to go too deep but for the best speed if it if it matters you should go down to like one two percent it's still safe as long as you have good power limit so and the battery is nice and hot so right now we're getting 110 kilowatt yeah but as soon as we hit 20 percent then i think we have less than 100 kilowatt We are now back at Nebenes. A uh, long story. Since the previous clip, at least three weeks has passed. And meanwhile, I had COVID. And I'm almost 100% recovered from COVID now. But anyway, so um, this is the second part of the test, which is that we are charging up the car now uh, until it stops. It's not too important that it needs to stop at 100% because we are going to now test the efficiency when going at 90 kilometers per hour. Previously we tested 120 kilometers per hour and I want to know how efficient is this car and it is seven years old so I also want to know how far can it drive. And the weather today is slightly better than the previous test but that is also not too uh, important because we will also document um, how how the, the the weather conditions are but i'm going to show you something inside here so we've been here a while about an hour or so again uh, this is not normal operation of the car the way we do it now the reason why i take my time to do it is because i'm going to measure something no for normal operation of the car if we would be traveling you wouldn't waste time charging to whatever. You wouldn't waste an hour here. You might top up. Actually, what, what will happen then usually is that you start from home and then you don't charge here. You charge after driving two, three hours. So remember that, guys. So here we have Scamma Tesla again. I'm just looking at the numbers here about uh, just monitoring what's going on. Most likely it's going to finish charging soon. And then we start driving. But it doesn't have to be 100% because it's just a matter of a few kilometers, which is not too relevant for the range test. But I will show you something important though, which is that if you go to the setting here, this is something that exists in the old cars. Uh, Model 3, for example, doesn't have this anymore. It's called range mode. And what range mode does is it will, like this display says it, yeah, it will reduce the climate control. But what is more important is that by using range mode, I'm going to try to show you here. Uh, what happens is that once we start driving, there will be some leftover heat from the motor. And that one, in range mode, it will feed the battery with it. And the battery temperature right now is at 27.6, but the battery will actually rise the battery temperature will rise until about 40 degrees celsius and that is important because the hotter the battery the more capacity you get out of it it hurts the battery a little bit but for this test we want to have range mode on so now we're just gonna wait until it finishes and then off we go 
Oh yeah, we are finally on the move now. We charged to, well, it was 98 something. So whatever, it's not too uh, important on this test. So right now we're cruising at 92 kilometers per hour, which is 90 GPS speed. Tire pressure has been checked. Uh, it's supposed to be 3.1 bar each. I have inflated them to 3.3 bar each when they were cold. Uh, that's because it's recommended to slightly over inflate uh, winter tires. So um, hopefully now uh, the scale is available. So we're gonna check the weight of the car. All right, it seems to be working. Check front axle. Let's go a little bit closer. Ooh. 1,040, all right. The car is more or less empty. The whole weight of the car. 2,200, all right. You hear a little weird squeaking from the, where well, it's from down here. I'm going to get it fixed. That will be covered in another episode. Okay, let's continue the test. Okay, let's see now, wind sock. Oh, we have some significant tailwind. All right. And then how is Mjösen doing today? Uh, well, Mjösen is fairly calm. And also the temperature today is somewhat higher. Well, it's higher than previously. So you see that um, in the previous test, it was around zero degrees Celsius. Today, it's actually 10 degrees Celsius. And that means better driving conditions. So now I just have to try to get past these trucks. We have been driving for almost an hour. We have reached uh, Rutshögda. This is a turnaround point. So far, it seems like we have, yeah, okay, the consumption is a bit uh, low, but that's because we have tailwind. So we have to check once we're back at the starting point, but all right, so far, so good. Just gonna report that it's 11 degrees Celsius out here. Dry road, uh, not too much traffic yet. Yeah, over here we turn around. And then we will also do the measuring of distance at uh, Nebenes. All right, we just passed by Nebenes right now. And uh, trip is 169.5, yeah. So um, 169.5, that means that we have an error. It's, I think it's around 1.5%. I'm gonna calculate it afterwards, but it's supposed to be 167 kilometers. So right now we are at 55% and uh, 54%. So uh, we are roughly halfway. We have to drive a little bit more. I'm gonna turn around at uh, Dahl and then we do not a full cycle, but uh, some, yeah, maybe go through Harm or somewhere and then turn around. And we will try to end back at uh, Nebenes with around 1% left. <laughs> so we have been driving non-stop for over four hours. So I don't know what it, which one is the most impressive one that I have been driving without peeing for four hours or that this six year old battery has done over 360 kilometers. We have to correct for a distance error, but yeah, we're gonna bail out now. We have 2% left, so that, that is good enough. So let's get over to the supercharger now. Oh, finally, we are back at Nebenes. I record all the data. Now uh, I'm, I just have to go back home and then we will analyze everything. So uh, I need to just check everything against the other cars and uh, so on. So, yeah. Right, we're back home now and uh, let's take a look at the results. So, and the 120 kilometers per hour test, now that one was done a while ago, but um, uh, I managed to get around uh, 260 kilometers of range. And then back then I measured 63.5 kilowatt hour on the pack, but it was right before I managed to do some calibration. So those numbers, okay, uh, might be a little bit lower. Uh, but if we don't count, I mean, I estimated also the degradation seems to be at 12%. So it means that if we don't count the degradation, if the battery was fairly new, and if the temperature was a little bit higher, it would be probably around 300 kilometers of range on a high-speed test, which means that Millennium Falcon, a seven-year-old Tesla, or actually technically six years old with the battery, can actually match the more modern Oh, sorry, there is some light stuff. 
it can actually match the more modern EVs out there uh, that is that came out around 2020 2021 so that is actually pretty impressive yeah and then as for the 90 kilometers per hour test we did today it was better weather but still not I say 10 degrees Celsius is not it's not really winter and it's not summer it's like springtime and um, then it seems like the car should be able to drive around 380 kilometers and if we had no degradation it would be 425 kilometers which is pretty impressive but it doesn't have the same efficiency as the more modern model s because this one has the old big induction motor in the back more modern teslas they have uh well, actually they have permanent permanent magnet uh, motors and stuff in the front and that is more efficient but still i i think it's pretty good and also this time i measured uh, the capacity to be around 64.9 kilowatt hour but that is a different video i'm trying to calibrate the battery because it seems like the battery has been only staying between 90 percent and 50 percent 40 percent it hasn't gone to the extremes too low and too high which means that the bms is the way i, I understand it it uh, will then under report underestimate the capacity because that's safer uh, and then by calibrating it you learn or you teach the bms or you let the bms learn again where the maximum and the minimum is and that means that it will actually look like we are getting capacity back uh, you can't reverse uh, degradation but that's just the way i believe that the bms and the battery works because it's it's safer in a way uh, it's better safe than sorry to not discharge the battery too low because if you go too low if you're being optimistic you might damage the battery and the other way also if you charge the battery too high you might also damage the battery or even cause fire so i think that's the way the bms has been programmed to be pessimistic and now with the with the um uh, uh calibration and balancing i'm doing i'm trying to find the true value yeah but that would be in a separate video so i have to say overall that this car this seven-year-old tesla does drive and feel quite well really and the efficiency and the range can match modern evs out there so uh yeah i think that's going to be it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later